So, okay, uh, a word about Southeast Asia and the Philippines in the story. Uh, when I present a ton of evidence to you, the Philippines will always be in the sample, and I'm always going to try to point out uh, how it's doing relative to the rest. But here's kind of the narrative, uh, and, and I'm stealing a lot of this from Ben. I wonder if you'll, Ben Lagarda will recognize my theft. Uh, but there it is. Uh, Iloilo was the heart uh, of. Uh, uh, of the textile. We're talking, of course, about cottage industry, very labor intensive, but so what? It's industry. Uh, and uh, it's a major force, major enough such that Manila was, uh, 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 that local cloth, cloth was uh, almost a tenth of Manila's exports. So it was not insignificant. They weren't producing the cloth just for for local industry, in fact, they control the local uh, industry, uh, the local market, and also export it. Um, most of those exports uh, stayed in Asia, but nonetheless, they're exports. And look what happens just what three days, decades later. Uh, they are no longer exporting; uh, they are importing, uh, and 60% of their imports are textiles. Immense change, therefore in comparative advantage and relative uh, uh, competitiveness in, in the Philippine economy over, over those three decades. And by the 18, 1880s, forget it, they're wiped out, or as Ben says, in a sad state. Uh, Spanish authorities did not use any devices to try to protect uh, this big industry from foreign damage. No tariffs, uh, no restrictions on the imports of the stuff, or at least not much, and the tariffs are quite low. Uh, so there was no kind of protective response. Uh, the you know, Fil Filipinos, of course, had no autonomy to do so. Uh, so it was up to the Spanish authorities to decide. So the bottom line is that, as the Philippine example illustrates, and Indonesian data confirms, uh, is that uh, it looks like Southeast Asia underwent the most pronounced deindustrialization over this first global century compared to Latin America and compared to East Asia and, uh, and other parts of the world. And it is correlated with Southeast Asia, including the Philippines, having the biggest terms of trade boom. They all undergo a terms of trade boom all get this favorable terms of trade shock. The prices of their exports go up, the prices of the imports go down. They're importing manufacturers and they're exporting copra and, and pineapples and so on and so forth. Um, so uh, it's a primary product price boom and uh, the whole region uh, gets this favorable price shock. Well, it's favorable for the exporters, not favorable for the import competing industries which are getting wiped out by deindustrialization. Uh, okay, so what are the causes? Uh, it's, uh, you don't have to think very deeply uh, to come up with the causes of the deindustrialization. You just have to figure out which of these matter most. Uh, here's one possibility. The world is integrating. Uh, there's uh, liberal moves afoot so that tariff barriers and non-tariff barriers mercantilism, all those things are disappearing, uh, making it, uh, inviting more trade. Uh, furthermore, transportation costs are dropping tremendously over the period. So that is inviting more uh, trade and uh, therefore more <coughs> exploiting of comparative advantage and uh, all the rest. Uh, and it will create deindustrialization in those economies who are not as good at it as Britain is. Um, this implies, if this, uh, if this cause is instrumental uh, of the four, it implies at least you get an improvement in your terms of trade. You got it. The only way the foreign manufacturers uh, you know, can uh, get a bigger grip on your market is if they come in with cheaper and or better quality products. Uh, well, uh, if those are your imports, 
the price of your imports are going down, that means your terms of trade goes up. And that's not a bad thing for the economy as a whole. Bad thing for manufacturing. Not a bad thing for the economy as a whole. So that's one. The second uh, is, of course, the Industrial Revolution starts in Europe. They're at the leading edge. Uh, they've got the, uh, the best practice technology, and they're improving that fast. Uh, and uh, so they are, supply costs, therefore, are dropping like a, uh, very rapidly uh, in Western Europe as they keep doing things better and better uh, with more skills, more machines, and, uh, and all the rest. Uh, and in order to get rid of this uh, glut of textiles and, and metal goods that they're producing, uh, they have to dump it on world markets. Uh, they can't dump it at home, it's too much of it. They have to dump it on world markets. And they can't dump it on world markets unless they lower the price. So some part of those productivity improvements that are taking place associated with the, the first industrial revolution in Britain, they have no choice. They have to share it, some of it, with the rest of the world. Well, maybe half of those gains they have to share with the rest of the world by offering the rest of the world lower prices. Uh, so there, there's another reason why uh, that second cause also implies an improvement of the terms of trade for the Philippines and everybody else in what we now call the third world. Here's a third possibility. There could be a deterioration in competitiveness uh, of manufacturing and industry in home markets in, in the third world. Um, that's a possibility, but it implies, uh, it doesn't imply an improvement in your terms of trade. Uh, none at all, actually, because most of these countries that are, except perhaps for India, that are producing manufacturers, a very small share of uh, uh, manufacturing production in the world economy. And it's out there in the world economy where prices are determined, uh, not in the, in the local market. So you get, no, you get no kick to your terms of trade out of that. And finally, you could, of course, uh, uh, find that you're uh, more and more productive in producing copra, and so you do more and more of it uh, as uh, you're relatively more efficient at it. Uh, you get no terms of trade improvement from that either. Indeed, you probably get a deterioration if you're a main producer of copra. Uh, so uh, it's, this is kind of neat because you have these four competing explanations of the deindustrialization. The two above make an additional prediction your terms of trade should go up. The two below make the opposite prediction, no, you won't get any improvement in your terms of trade. Ah, well that will invite uh, a test or a partial test of which of these are most important. And you saw this before, but here's one of the regions, Latin America, but all the others obey the same laws of motion. And that is big boom in the terms of trade, up by a factor of three, over seven, nine decades. Uh, biggest price boom ever. Biggest terms of trade boom ever. Uh, don't read your newspapers and think the recent commodity price boom is original, novel, or even big. Because <laughs> that's bigger. <laughs> and uh, no doubt it went on longer. Lots of instability in there, which has implications. But nonetheless, uh, this big surge in the terms of trade. So that favors the two causes you had at the top of the list of four, right? The Industrial Revolution starts in the, in the West, uh, uh, cause number one, cause number two, globalization. Okay? Uh, and uh, the uh, very steep rise, the, so the big shock, uh, and hard to see that, no doubt, uh, but that gives you uh, a few regions and parts of the world to uh, compare this one. That's Mexico. That's Mexico going from uh, the 1820s up to the uh, late uh, 1850s. Uh, there is an, in an increase in the terms of trade, but it's not much. Certainly not much compared to these other countries. So first off, wow, hey, there's something distinctive uh, about Mexico. It undergoes the most, one of the most modest improvements in the terms of trade. Therefore, I guess, the impact of what we call Dutch disease 
uh, on, the, uh, on the exporting economy would be less, and the deindustrial, uh, deindustrialization forces would be less. So maybe this is part of the explanation for the exceptional experience of Mexico, which does go in deindustrialization like everybody else, but not as much. Well, that may be it. Uh, what explains that? Well, Mexico specializes in silver. And the relative price of silver doesn't boom much over this period compared to other primary products. So it's just what they specialize in that yields that result. Endowments matter in terms, in terms of the story. So, okay. Um, what I want to know uh, at, when we'll use Mexico is, as, as an, uh, an example is how much of the deindustrialization experience is due to forces outside of Mexico's control. That is, world market conditions, globalization, price shocks in the world economy over which they have no control. And how much of it is, it their, is their own doing? That is, the domestic supply side conditions at home.